Hello everybody, I am Leher Jain, a second year student at the National Law School of India University. Today, on behalf of the legal team of Clatch Tutor, I'm here to discuss an extremely topical and interesting topic. The topic we will be discussing today is the Supreme Court's order on the farmers' protests. Now, recently in January 2021, the Supreme Court made certain observations and passed an interim order on the farm laws along with the farmers' protests that were taking place in and around Delhi. The name of the case is Rakesh Vaishnav versus Union of India. The Supreme Court bench comprised of three judges, Chief Justice Sharad Bobre, Justice A.S. Bopanna, and Justice Rama Subramanian. After the farm laws were passed in 2020, several writ petitions were filed in the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court decided to club all of these writ petitions together and divided them under three categories and will deal with the same under the present case. The first is the challenge to the constitutionality of all of the three farm laws. The second category is petitions that are arguing for upholding the constitutionality of the farm laws. The third category of petitions is regarding the constitutionality of the farmers' protest itself and the discussions around Article 19. It is important to note that the Supreme Court only decided the matter under the third petition in this interim order and made certain other observations, which means that the first two categories of petitions are still yet to be heard by the Supreme Court. It is extremely important to understand the background and the context in which this case ended up in the Supreme Court. Firstly, there were three farmers' laws which were passed by the Parliament of India in 2020. First, the Farmers' Produce Trade and Commerce Act of 2020, which allowed farmers to go beyond the physical bounds of an APMC to trade in their goods. Secondly, the amendment to the Essential Commodities Act. Now the Essential Commodities Act helps the government regulate the price and quantity of certain commodities in the market. Through this amendment, certain commodities were deregulated by the government. And lastly, the Farmers Agreement on Price Assurance and Farm Services Act, which now allows for contract farming and lets farmers enter into private contracts with private parties. So the first two categories of the petition deals with the constitutionality of all of these three farm laws. The main contention which is now being raised is that the farmers protest in and around Delhi has led to the blockade of a lot of roads and highways around the same which is now stopping citizens from being able to freely move around and carry their trade or business. And it was alleged that this infringes their fundamental rights. The Supreme Court also made note of two things. First, the senior citizens, women and children were exposing themselves to serious health hazards, which was in the form of COVID or cold. And the second was that a few deaths had already taken place because of illness or by the way of suicide. Now, although the Supreme Court does not adopt a very long legal analysis, it is important for us to know what Article 19 Clause 1 exactly says. Article 19 reads that all citizens shall have the right, subclause A, to the freedom of speech and expression, and subclause B, to assemble peacefully without arms which is exactly the contention of the farmers as they were peacefully protesting on the streets of Delhi. The Supreme Court in its interim order made three important decisions. First was on the right to protest. The Supreme Court opined, and I quote, we may not stifle a peaceful protest, unquote, which means that the right of protest of the farmers was upheld because they were peacefully protesting and they did not infringe or hurt anybody else. However, the bench also made a comment that after the passing of the interim order, the farmers may consider this as an achievement, which may convince them to go back to their livelihoods. 
The second important decision was to constitute a committee. The Supreme Court recognized that the negotiations between the farmers and the government up until now had not yielded any result. Hence, before deciding the constitutionality of the farm laws, they decided to constitute a four-member expert committee that would take into consideration the individual grievances of the farmers and provide a, a comprehensive report to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court also decided to stay the implementation of the farm laws, which means now that until the Supreme Court decides this case, the farm laws will not be implemented in this country. It is interesting to note that the Attorney General made an important argument regarding this, where he argued that there is a presumption of constitutionality of every law, which means that every law which is passed by the parliament will be considered to be legal up until the point that the Supreme Court decides that it is not. However, the Supreme Court said that it does have the power to stay the implementation of the act. So today we have covered the farmers' protests and the constitution of an expert committee, along with the stay of the implementation of the farm laws. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any further queries, please be free to mail us and do leave your feedbacks in the comments. Thank you.